All right, let's try this. I don't know how this is gonna go. What's he smiling at? <laughs> so I thought I would record uh, like about my labor, oh gosh, labor and delivery and all of that. Um, because it's been a while now. She's over two months old and I'm starting to forget everything. I even got her little folder from the hospital to check times and stuff because I, I don't remember everything. Um, so she just had a nap a little bit ago and she just got done nursing. So she could puke at any time. And where are you? Where are you? There you are. And she's a little bit red because she's was just nursing on me and kind of fell asleep and got all hot and you know how that goes maybe okay um <laughs> she likes it can you you want to sit with me for a minute come here honey oh goodness oh goodness look at you honey yes henry you too my dog every time i talk to her he's like are you talking to me are you talking to me come here come here it's okay come here Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Okay, so here's my sweet girl, Miss Luella. She looks just like her darn dad. She was nursing on this side, can you tell? She was laying on my arm. I always have her, like, ear print on my arm. Um, she is doing so well. She has gained, like, five and a half pounds since her birth weight. I don't know what she's looking at. She's over 11 pounds now, probably about 11 and a half now, I bet. Hey, stop it. Ugh. It's just the neighbors. And she's doing really well. Oh, no. Is that a pout lip? Henry, quit it. It's just the neighbors. Go get. You're making her sad. Look at her. No, no. It's okay, honey. You should be used to it by now. And she's gotten to be a big chunky girl. She was born like really lean, uh, just under seven pounds. And like I said, now she's over 11. Look at you! And she's super smiley and happy now, which is nice because she, what are you smiling at? Definitely went through a cranky phase. Probably has another one coming up. What's that? What are you smiling at, honey? I don't know what she's looking at. But we'll see how this goes. I might not get very long with her, um, and she's going to be ready for a nap. So, um, let me scoot back a little bit. So, mm, let's start with, oh, no. I knew that was going to happen because she hadn't really. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Covered in puke. Anyway, stop it, dude. This is not going well. Dog won't shut up. Baby puking. Now she's going to be mad. She hates it when I wipe her down. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I went into labor November 24th at about 11.15 at night. Um, my water broke. I was laying in bed and I felt like a little cramp. And so I decided to go to the bathroom just to make sure everything was okay because I was only, well, I was 37 weeks, um, so I did not think that I was going into labor or anything, but since I felt like a little cramp, I was like, mm, I better just make sure everything's okay. Um, so I went to the bathroom, and as soon as I sat on the toilet, my water broke and just water started gushing out, so I knew that that's what it was. It wasn't like a little trickle or anything. It was just nice flow of water. So... Um, my husband was sleeping and I was like, babe, my water just broke and I don't really remember like his face or what he said or anything, but, um, we were just kind of in shock because like I said, I was 37 weeks, so we did not expect at all, um, to have her early, especially I'm a first time mom and everybody was telling me, you know, your first baby, you can go over your due date and you can be you know, 40 plus one plus two even. So I was expecting to go over. I mean, I wasn't really stressing too much. Bless you, bless you, honey, um, about my due date. But um, I just, I for sure didn't think I was gonna have her early. 
so my water broke um i had a doula so i text my doula and i told her and i think she didn't believe me she's like are you sure it's a little bit early <laughs> Um, and you're this is your first baby and I'm like no like it definitely there's no question that it did um, so she told me that it was up to me I think there's a little bit of a conflict all the time between what you should do when your doc when your water breaks between like midwives and doctors and doulas and all that um, my doctor my doctor's office says that as soon as your water breaks to go to labor and delivery or triage or whatever um, but my doula said that as long as everything's okay and there's no meconium or weird smell or anything that um, I could labor at home for as long as I felt comfortable doing as long as everything was okay um, and she's like honestly you should try and get some rest because if you go and check into the hospital now and your water's broke they're not gonna let you leave and you're gonna likely be there for a long time I mean a few days um, so I decided to try and labor at home as long as I could to be as comfortable as I could. Um, I didn't have any meconium or anything like that. And um, I was having contractions pretty much, pretty much straight away or very soon after my water broke, but they weren't, <laughs> she's just smiling at us in there, I think, I don't know. Um, they weren't really strong and they weren't like painful. Like they were definitely uncomfortable, but I could breathe through them and I was just laying in bed. And, um, for the ones that hurt a little bit more, I just got out of bed and I was kind of like walking around and trying to stretch and leaning over the bed and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so I don't know how much sleep I got that night, but we did stay in bed. Um, and then the next day I was texting my doula again and um, I decided to Josh and I decided to check into the hospital because it had been 12 hours since my water broke about. Um, so I just didn't want to risk getting an infection or anything like that. Like that was already quite a long time. So we went and checked into the hospital. I think it was, it was definitely right around lunchtime the next day. So November 25th. Um, I think we definitely, yeah, it was around lunchtime because we went to Chick-fil-A before because we were starving. And I knew that if we went to the hospital, we would likely not get food or we wouldn't get very good food. Um, so we went and got Chick-fil-A before and then we went and checked in the hospital. So it was around lunchtime or around noon. Um, that was that yawn. So this little girl, she, her awake window is like an hour and a half. So when she starts yawning and getting tired, I'm gonna have to pause this and go put her down for a nap or else she will just be cranky. Huh, honey? You're very distracting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so once we got to the hospital, I was put you know, in that room where you're like waiting um, to see if your water actually broke and they check you and monitor your belly and all of that stuff. Um, and I did not love that room. I did not have a good experience in there. Um, they confirmed my water broke, which I already knew. Um, and then I decided that I was going to get the, um, oh, sorry, honey. I think it's called the hep block thing or something for um, the IV in your hand. I decided I was um, going to get that. Uh, at first I wasn't going to because I wasn't planning on getting any medication and I didn't want to have it in case I wanted to like get in the bath and stuff. I didn't want it to like bug me. Um, but the nurse told me that even if I didn't plan on getting medication, it's nice to have it just in case they needed to give me something. It was already there and ready. And then like, I wasn't like in heavy labor or something like that. And they're trying to get it in my hand. So I had five different people try to get that stupid thing in my hand. And let me tell you, it hurt so bad <laughs> like it it was ridiculous it took five people um and one of the girls that tried it was terrible and like hurt me so bad and like i had this huge bruise on my hand for a few weeks after i had her um because they like mangled me trying to get that thing in there they had to send in these like two like expert ladies or whatever and use one of those um it's like a sonogram type thing I guess for your veins and so they can see your veins and like know exactly where to put the needle to put it in so they had to come and do it it's like stupid I don't know they said I had like tiny flat veins or something I don't know 
But so that was um, how it started when I got to the hospital. That wasn't fun. So anyway, then I was moved to, I can't stop looking at her in the viewfinder, sorry. I don't know what she is looking at. Stuffed animals maybe, little faces over there. Um, I was moved to the labor and delivery room. Um, oh no, before that, the nurse lady came in and said that my doctor has suggested some medication for me since it had been so long since my water broke. They wanted to get things like moving along because my tra contractions I don't know how to explain my contractions really, but basically the whole time, to me, they never felt like what they should have been. They were either really close together or they were not strong. And so it was hard to like, like I would have one and then I would have another one like right away, but they weren't like really strong. I don't know, they, they were really strange. Anyway, so um, the way that the nurse had told me, she made it sound like, a suggestion of this medication and since I didn't know what it was I asked my doula about it and she's like well just see if you can talk to your doctor about it and then you know make a decision on if you want to do it or not um, so by the time I got up to the labor and delivery room soon after my doctor came in and I could tell that he was irritated with me um, because he thought I was refusing this medication and I didn't realize he that it was something that he's like you need you need to do this <laughs> I mean, even so, I still have the choice, even if he like says I should do it, I don't have to, but it, the nurse that came in and told me about it didn't make it sound like he said, you need to do this because of this reason. She just said, you know, he thinks you should do this. And then I told her I wanted to discuss it with my doula and talk to the doctor because I didn't know anything about it. So anyway, he was annoyed with me because he thought I was refusing it and I needed it. Um, and honestly, I cannot remember what it, was it i think it was pitocin i think this was all about the pitocin because like i said my contractions were like weird and i had already been in labor for over 12 hours at this point because it was like a while after i had checked in and stuff um and so you know he was just a little bit concerned with the risk of infection since my water had broke and she wasn't getting any closer to coming out so um they did give me pitocin um which i was fine with and seriously like me and my husband were shocked about 10 minutes after i got that boom like i was in active labor like my contractions were like bam 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 um but like i said they weren't i don't know they just weren't like i never i definitely like had the urge to push but they were so short that like by the time i felt like i needed to push it would go away and then I could like I nothing was progressing because like they would say okay you know push push again or push more or push longer or something and I'm like I can't I don't feel like the need to it, I don't know it was very weird so anyway I don't remember exactly how long I was in labor for but it was a long time um, I didn't do any pain medication which was um, my plan and honestly like the whole labor part with the contractions and um, dilating and pushing her out and everything, that was, well right now I'm gonna say it was fine. I'm sure in the moment I would not have said, oh, this is fine. Um, I mean, I definitely struggled. I tried every position possible because I did not wanna give birth on my back. I knew that that was like a position that just, it works against you as far as gravity goes. And I wanted um, to have just like full mobility of my whole body to like get her out the best way possible. And I just did not want to give birth on my back um, from all the research I had done. That was just like, I was like in my head, I'm like, I refuse to do that. So I tried every position possible. I mean, on my hands and knees, walking around, sitting on the toilet, one leg up on the bathtub, um, bending over the bed. I mean, just everything. And um all of those positions i couldn't get the pushing right because my contractions just weren't they weren't like working with me and for me they were just like really close together and really short and so i never like had an urge to like push i'm using a lot of hand movement like i felt like i needed to you know like i knew i needed to but i just couldn't get my head and my body to like do it right 
I don't know. So the whole time I was laboring, um, like I said, I was just doing all different positions, walking around. My doula was there. She was great. The nurses were great. They were all helping me walk to the bathroom and out of the bathroom and try different positions and rubbing my back and rubbing my feet. Um, my husband was there. Um, I didn't have anybody. Well, I had my doula in the room, my husband, and then my photographer. Um, one of my really good friends, she took birth photos for me and video, which is so cool to have now, but like, oh, I don't know. I get anxious just thinking about it. I've looked at the pictures and I love them and I've watched some videos and they're amazing, but I can't watch the videos with the volume on. It's like too soon for me. I don't know. And I just get like kind of stressed and anxious thinking about it. It's like, it's a weird thing. I don't know, but I'm so grateful to have them. I think it's, I don't know. It's just so cool because also the whole time I was in labor, my eyes were closed like the entire time. She's almost ready for her nap. Huh? Are you getting a little There we go. Are you tired, honey? Yeah. <laughs> She's getting mad. <laughs> yeah, the whole, my whole labor, like I could not open my eyes. And I had read before, um, like when I was pregnant, I had read that a lot of women, like it's just too much stimulation to open your eyes you know with the lights and the people and like you're trying to focus on your body and that's exactly what happened to me like totally unintentionally but i just i think maybe i opened my eyes three times or something i don't know i just couldn't like i it was too overstimulating for me <laughs> was that a cry laugh she doesn't laugh yet but i feel like she's getting so close yeah honey Okay, let me pause this and go lay her down for a nap, and then I'll come back and finish. Okay, can you say bye? Say bye, I'm gonna go sleep. Bye. Oh, that, is that attractive? I don't know. Okay, we'll be back. I'll be back. Okay, let's see if I can finish this. I don't really remember where I left off. Um, I just laid her down for a nap, too, so I don't know how long I'll get. Some days she naps really well for her second nap, which this is and some days she just cat naps so i don't know um but i think i was talking about how i couldn't open my eyes through my whole labor pretty sure i think that's where i left off yeah and then i was talking about who was in the room with me so it was just my husband my doula and my photographer um i didn't want anybody else in the room or at the hospital at all actually because i just wanted to not worry about anybody else and not be stressing about like how they were if they were hungry you know them coming in and i just i just didn't want that whole thing so nobody was at the hospital except for us so my doula was someone i think i've talked about this before she um incorporated like music into her like teaching and training of how to get through labor and birth and everything so i hadn't even finished my playlist either because i like I said, went into labor early, so, um, but I had some of it done, but, so there's this whole thing where there's, like, different stages of labor, and she had different, you know, types of music that you would want to use to help you get through all of it, um, and then when it came down to it, like, basically, none of that helped me at all. <laughs> it's just, like, one of those things where I went into it, like, with ideas of, what I wanted it to be, um, things I definitely wanted to do, didn't want to do, stuff like that. But then I think since I was just kind of like thrown into it, I didn't, my brain just didn't have the time to like even really remember most of that stuff. Um, so like, you know, trying to use like meditative techniques and using the music and stuff like that, like it just, it didn't even cross my mind when I was actually in labor because my contractions were just like so like boom 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 like I just was trying to get through it the whole time rather than thinking okay what should I be doing right now to help myself I don't know um I do remember in my head that I had said a few times like I had like this little mantra that I was going into um labor with that um all of the strength that I need is within me and I think I said that a couple of times but like when it <laughs> when it like came down to it like I just I doubted myself a lot I remember saying 
um, I can't do this a bunch of times. I remember asking for help so many times. Um, my doula would tell me like I was doing a jo good job or something and I would be like, well, how do you know, you know? And my, I think my husband said that too, like, you're doing so good. And I'm like, you don't know, <laughs> you don't know anything. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just one of those things where I tried to prepare as much as I could and just the way that everything went, um, a lot of the techniques and stuff that I learned from my birth classes and from my doula and stuff, like it just, I didn't apply them. So that's how, that's how that went. Um, yeah, but so my whole labor and um, pushing and all of that really wasn't terrible. Like it took a long time just because like I said, I couldn't get a position that worked for me to feel how to push properly. And I was just like so refusing to push on my back. Um, but then when it came down to it, I ended up giving birth on my back, which like made it even harder because I remember when I was pushing that in my head, I was saying, I don't want to give birth on my back. I don't want to give birth on my back. I don't want to be doing this on my back. And there I was on my back doing it. And so it was like frustrating me in my head. And I think it was just taking my focus away from like what I needed to be doing for my body. So it took longer for me to figure out the way that I needed to push because I was just so in my head like annoyed that I was pushing on my back because I didn't want to. Ugh, typical me to be like that. Um, so yeah, I did not end up getting an epidural and let me talk about that just a little bit. Um, because I definitely went into this and really my whole pregnancy and everything kind of wanting to do everything as natural as possible. Um, I took classes all about um, like your mindset and doing things natural and the way that like your body was meant to do and all that stuff and the pros and cons of epidural and interventions and all of that stuff. So I was pretty prepared and like I would say decently educated on everything and my options and that I had the choice to say no to anything that I wanted to, you know, just because you're at the hospital. Um, and a doctor tells you to do something doesn't mean you have to do it you know you get to decide you get to decide what medications you get what medications your baby can get um, so that's how I went into this um, yeah but I also had an open mind and you know I was thinking that I just have to go with the flow because you just don't know what's gonna happen um, and how things are gonna turn out and I might change my mind and you don't know you know how you're gonna feel until you're in the moment so the epidural wasn't an issue for me. I never actually once thought about it when I was in labor or asked for it or anything. I was just trying to get through, kind of going through the motions and getting through each contraction as they came and like trying to figure out, you know, what position to be in and what to do to make myself feel better and to make the baby um, like come down further and do what we're supposed to do together. Um, so I never even thought about pain medication or anything when I was in labor. Um, but I don't know, how do I, I don't know, I'm like going back and forth and I don't know where to like, how to talk about things in order because they're like all out of order, I think. Um, but yeah, so I ended up giving birth on my back and when people talk about pushing um, and how you like, push as if you're like having like a big bowel movement it wasn't really that way for me so I don't know like I think that's what I'm that's what I'm saying is like my contractions were like strange and like didn't I, could, I don't even know how to explain them I've heard them explained a lot of different ways with how they feel and mine didn't feel like really super strong ever and then when I was in active labor every contraction felt just like a pushing sensation. Like I just wanted to like bear down and push. It wasn't like a pain in my, I don't know. It was really strange. Um, so I, but when people talk about the ring of fire, did I just say that? I definitely know what that is and felt it. Um, but it was totally bearable and like I got through it and it was fine. I know I screamed, I think through that part. Um, I'm pretty sure I said, get her out. No, I didn't know it was a girl. I'm pretty sure I said, get it out. I distinctly remember that. Um, and yeah, but like labor 
and the contractions and the pushing and actually getting her um, head out and getting her body out and all of that, that was not as nearly as painful as I thought it would be. Like it was so bearable um, for me to get through all of that. It was more the mental part of it that was a real struggle for me. But let me tell you about right after you have the baby because nobody tells you this and nobody told me this. Oh my gosh, especially if you don't have an epidural. So if you ha have an epidural, you at least have some kind of pain management for um, the placenta coming out, any tearing that you might have, any stitches that you might get. And then I forget what it's called, but like the tummy massages that aren't massages at all where they have to like push all down on your stomach to make sure your uterus is going back down and getting any clots out and not clotting really bad and all of that and they have to do that for like the first i don't know they do it right away and then they keep doing it and doing it and then the next day they do it and then the next day they do it and it's just like oh my god i forget what that's called but um if you have an epidural all of that is probably like a lot more manageable <laughs> I almost wish that there was an option to give birth naturally and then right after the baby comes out get some kind of pain medication or epidural for the after stuff because that stuff is what was so painful for me so I did end up tearing which I'm just like so annoyed with because I'm sure it's because I was on my back but that's just the way it ended up like that's the only way that I was pushing properly for her to come out um but I ended up having a third degree tear, which is pretty bad. I think it only goes to like four degrees, so there's that. And she wasn't even a very big baby. Um, she was six something, I forget. I have her paperwork here, but I don't really care to look. Let's see, I will look, I guess, since I have it. Um, what was she? Ah, there's too much stuff. Oh, look at her little feet. Look, she actually, have, she had big feet. Like, big feet. She still has big feet. Um, anyway, yeah, she was under seven pounds. Here, where is it? It's somewhere right here. Wait, 3,000 grams. <laughs> After, you know, the baby comes out, they take the placenta out, and then my doctor just starts stitching me up right... No, no, this is, this is after. Um... So right after you have the baby, you know, they, the placenta comes out, which everybody says, you know, you have the baby and then the placenta just falls out. You don't even feel that because you've just had the baby and you're so, you know, wrapped up in the baby. It wasn't that way for me at all. I definitely felt that and it was really uncomfortable. Um, I didn't have to push it out, but I could feel him get, taking it out. Um, and then, you know, the tummy massages, the pushing on the belly, that was so, so, so painful. Like, I, I can't even describe that. I don't know why that was so painful for me, but it just was. It hurt more than anything else. Um, and then, so after that, you know, my doctor's just stitching me up and I looked down at one point and I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, I saw him like with this huge, long... I'll call it a thread I don't know what else to call it just like going like this like in me like oh my gosh it was so weird but that was so painful too and um I remember saying something like why does this hurt so bad and he was like yeah why are you why does this hurt you so much or why are you so sensitive or something like that and then he's like oh I think I forgot to numb you I'm like hello I didn't have any pain medication so you know the numbing down there probably helps quite a bit when you're like putting a needle and like stitching me all up so that was not fun that hurt a lot so what i will say again about the epidural is and my cousin told me this she told me this she has she has three kids and she had her last baby um without any pain medication or epidural um and she told me she's like i feel like um, I was in so much pain right after that it like took away from like the initial bonding with my baby She's like just get the epidural and now that I've gone through it all I Totally understand what she means um, And it's gonna be different for everybody of course, but for me 
all of that stuff right after having her was so painful for me i know that she was on my chest and i was holding her and i was crying and i just couldn't believe that i number one had a baby number two that that was all real and happening and number three that it was a girl because we didn't find out the gender um i knew she was here but like i still i couldn't open my eyes so i i just remember seeing her for the first time and then i knew she was on me but I didn't really look at, don't remember looking at her much. I just remember laying there with my eyes closed in pain um, and saying, ow, 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 like a lot and talking kind of to my doctor about that everything hurt. So now I totally understand that right after you have the baby, all of that stuff can be so painful and like, it's not what people say. We're like, oh, it you don't even you know all you think about is you have your baby and you don't even realize any of that stuff that's not true don't listen to people that is not true that is absolutely not true especially if you don't have an epidural because all of that stuff is going to hurt um and especially if you tear and you have to get stitched up it's going to hurt um so that part i mean I, don't, I wouldn't take anything back and i still wouldn't do an epidural and all of that like i'm happy with the way that everything went um, but it just sucks that, that that's like how it happened after, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be so nice if it was just blissful and like, oh my baby, and I'm just looking at her and like so in love with her and like I don't feel anything else, but it's just not the way that it happened for me. So, it's just the way it is. Um, but then after all of that was done, then I, you know, have more of a memory of like seeing her and um, holding her and she latched on right away which was awesome and I got to lay with her for a while and um, she did you know everything that I wanted um, for the most part for my birth happened as far as like the pain management and all of that and then um, with the baby too um, I didn't want her to have a bath and all of that kind of stuff so my hospital and my doctor and nurses and everybody were really really great about like respecting everything that I wanted um, not once did my doctor or anyone ever ask me do you want an epidural or do you want any pain meds or do you want this or do you, are you sure about this like they had a few things written on the board that were part of my birth plan that they needed to know and they just that's just how it was they never even asked me um and same with the stuff with the baby too like as far as like any medications for the baby or shots or um the bath and all of that i had like specific rules for that and they listened and followed that very well too so i got to bond with her for a while on me before um they took her from me because that was another thing i just i wanted my baby and i wanted her to be with me like at all times there's no reason that anybody needed to take her from me you know unless it was an emergency or something um and she was totally healthy and fine so she didn't need to be taken from me um and then like later on anything they needed to do like they do that um what is it called i don't remember it's like that like blood test where they like prick their foot and have to take a bunch of blood and it's really annoying and they hate it um she was on me while they did that um yeah so that was really nice so i got to spend a lot of time with her right away which was which was nice um and then what else i don't know like i i have very vague memories of like leaving that room and going to like our room that we were going to stay in i don't really remember that um, I ended up, what time did I have her? Um, I had her November 25th at, oh, it says it right there, 2214, but I don't know what time that is. <laughs> it was like almost an entire, what was it? Why? Hold on. Card. You want to know what's funny? Is um, we didn't have a name picked out for her. Well, we didn't really have a name picked out because number one, we didn't know if it was a boy or girl, and number two, we had like a little list of names that like we kind of liked, nothing that like we loved or talked about and like agreed on a name. So she was just um, baby girl Grizzle for about a day 
day and a half, something like that. We didn't have a name for her. Um, I'm just trying to find when she was born. Jeez. What time? It was like it was like 10 p.m. or something that next day, I think. Am I a terrible mom? Because I just don't remember this stuff. Like, how do people remember all of this stuff? They probably remember it because they do things like this right away. And I have waited like two plus months. Oh, it says like her weight, her length was 50.2 centimeters. Her head circumference was 34.9. But um, this is none of this is in stuff that I can read. <laughs> anyway she was born like I think 10 or 11 p.m. on the 25th so it was like a full 24 hours since my water broke I think something something close to that okay we'll just go with that because I can't find any of this information and you know what's funny is I know that my husband knows this and I don't even know this yeah, I'm a terrible mom because I don't know any of those little details. Also, they're just not very important to me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, she's here. She's healthy. We're all good. I don't really care the exact time she was born. I mean, I do, but you know what I mean? Like, if someone asks me, I don't freaking know. Um, so then, my hospital stay. We stayed two days. Um... And I probably need to make a whole separate video about like postpartum stuff because that's like super TMI and it doesn't really go along with this, I guess. I don't know. Um, I could throw in there like labor and delivery TMI stuff too, I guess. Um, but I just kind of wanted to get like the, the overall picture of what happened, how it happened, when it happened, and how baby girl got here. So, um... Yeah, we stayed two days in the hospital, and it was just so surreal the whole time. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. Um, our hospital is great, and all the nurses and everyone were very helpful and very, like, I'm so grateful for them. Like, they treated us so well and helped me so much. Um, one thing is they need to have, like... A decent little bed for husbands to sleep on because poor guy he had to sleep on like this little chair that pulls out and lengthens into a bed which is terrible so it's like you're already like not sleeping anyway and then when you're laying down any sleep you do get it's like terrible because it's so uncomfortable um, but yeah it was just so surreal being there I just kept like not and plus you're just so like sleep deprived and so tired that you don't really know what's going on. You're just kind of like lis like listening to what the nurses and stuff tell you, but like not really taking it in. So like, I don't know, I just remember, you know, since I tore so bad and I was in so much pain, I laid on my back in bed like most of the time and then I needed help going to the bathroom and all of that. But so it was really hard for me to get comfortable in bed. Like I couldn't lay on my side Maybe I could have, but I didn't even try because I was just scared to. Um, I felt like my belly was just like, I don't know. I just, just stayed on my back and didn't move for the most part. Um, and then I would like look over and see my baby like in the little bed that they have. And I'm like, this is so weird. That's my baby. Like, is that my baby? It was just crazy. And my husband too. It was just like, it was so crazy. Um... And then, you know, they would make sure that I was feeding her every, like, two hours max, I think it was. Um, and then we did let her go to the nursery one night. I think it was the last night that we were there because we were, I was not in my head. I was like, I am not going to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm going to have my baby right here with me the whole time. But then after the first day and like knowing all the nurses that would be around her and stuff, I was like, you know what, if we can take this night to like sleep a little bit more, she'll be totally fine in there and they bring her in to feed. Um, we did that on the last night that we were there and that was nice just to not have to like worry so much about her. But at the same time, I did still worry about her and I didn't sleep still. I'm sure I did sleep a little bit more though, but um, so I would say if you can take advantage of that and don't feel bad about it because, um, like 
just having that little bit of extra rest or sleep and a little bit less worry um, was nice because um, the day before that was just like so full on like I just went through all of that had the baby and then like trying to take care of her all night in there and nurse her and all of that like obviously that's all part of having a baby I understand but you're going to be doing that when you come home for like the rest of your life anyway so one night I think is okay if you are comfortable with it and you can go and visit them in the nursery too and you can go and look at them make sure everything's fine if you're like worried so um yeah, so I don't know. That's kind of the gist of it. I didn't give a lot of detail, did I? I think I'll do, like I said, a separate like TMI type of video about stuff that um, nobody talks about <laughs> because now that I've been through it all, I'm just like, I had no idea about this and no idea about that and nobody ever told me this. And I think a lot of it is probably just because like we forget it because you kind of have to especially if you ever want to have more kids you just have to forget like all the really hard stuff or you probably wouldn't do it again <laughs> um yeah but overall i mean i had a good experience aside from um the position not being what i wanted to give birth in aside from having to do the pitocin and aside from all of the pain afterwards and the tearing um, everything else was like I couldn't have asked for better people to be there helping me um, and like I had no health issues baby has no health issues or anything so aside from just like the painful stuff afterwards and like a few little annoying things that didn't go my way um, I'm I'm happy with how everything went and um, feel like I for the most part was in control of like all of the major things that I wanted to be in control of. Um, I wasn't in control of, you know, how my body was like working <laughs> really. Cause like you just can't control that. But um, like the, the stuff at the hospital and like the health stuff and all of that, um, I feel like I was in full con in control over and like knowledgeable about everything and could make um, educated de decisions about the things that I did and didn't want. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy that, that I did research and stuff before and took the classes and all of that, even though when it came down to it, a lot of the stuff I, I didn't use at all, but at least like they were there in my mind if I could use them or wanted to. And I had the like education about really important things to me um so i think that that was good um yeah so i think that's it that was like my labor and delivery and i had her at almost two and a half she was two weeks a little over two weeks early which was crazy um but kind of just obviously was meant to be she just she just wanted to be here she wanted to get the heck out of there she was like so crazy like active my whole pregnancy that I don't know I don't really know how it works like how your water breaks so I don't know if maybe she did it because she was so active and she just wanted out I don't know but it just worked out and then she was she was here for Thanksgiving and she was here for Christmas and it was just really nice and I kind of as much as I love the farther along we get because oh my gosh newborn stage is hard like so so tough and breastfeeding is so hard and I got mastitis and she cluster fed and we, we just like it's really hard it's a lot harder than you could ever imagine I guess if you've not done it and nobody can explain it to you and everybody has a different experience you know of of how their newborn was but it's been really difficult um she's just now getting to the stage just a little over two months where like it's it's not easy but it's like a little bit easier because like we have a little bit of a routine now and she can nap um and when she's awake she's not just crying or just eating she's like more alert and she smiles and she can hold her head up and so i love the stage that she, she's getting into now where she's a little bit older the newborn stage is so so hard um don't love it didn't love it 
um, but I do kind of miss like those first like couple of weeks bringing her home just because it's like as hard as it is and as tiring as it is it's just like blissful at the same time and now it's like you get into kind of like that routine of like it's just a mundane like same thing every day like wake up feed her play with her give her a nap and then she wakes up and then you feed her and then you play with her and then you give her a nap and you're just always trying to make sure that she's happy because if she's happy that's all that matters really and then i'm like happy baby happy mom happy dad you know a restful baby is a much more happy baby so we just right now i've just we've just been staying home like i'm just home trying to make sure that she's getting everything she needs and getting sleep when she needs sleep and not keeping her up too long to where she's overtired and all of that um yeah so we've just we're just at home um so i am looking forward to next month when she's like three months and we can get out a little bit more um i can be away from her a little bit longer because she's not needing to eat all the time um, because I am just only breastfeeding uh, and then the weather will be nicer so we can go outside a little bit more we'll have a little bit more of a routine and all of that so I am looking forward to um, the three month phase I think uh, yeah but you know I love her anyway I love her in all of them it's just newborn is really freaking hard um, yeah so I think that's it so she has been napping this whole time I've been talking. I'm so impressed with her. What a good girl. So that's it. That is the like short version of my whole labor and delivery. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go lay my butt on the couch while she's still napping and rest for a little bit because my back is killing me. So that's it. Okay. I never know how to end these videos. It's always so awkward. <laughs>